brief. A brief is where you're trying to prove that you should get a discharge on your student loans. A brief is very important because it allows you to provide testimony and evidence you might not be able to provide at trial. Therefore, always request to write a brief. An example of a brief is on our website. The following provides a few ideas of what you should put in your brief. The title is Plaintiff's Brief. It should be all caps, underlined, centered, and Times New Roman font. The body of the brief should be double-spaced, 12 point, Times New Roman font, and where each paragraph is numbered. The title of the body will just say argument, centered, and not underlined. In the argument section of your brief, you are trying to prove, based on your evidence, that you should be given a discharge. The part of our website labeled Case Law Regarding Student Loans has case law that might help you create an argument and counter-argument. You are trying to prove three things. One, you cannot maintain, based on current income and expenses, a minimal standard of living for the debitor and dependents if forced to pay off student loans. In other words, your current monthly disposable income is not enough to make monthly payments on your student loans that will allow you to pay off your student loans. Your current monthly payments on your student loans may be zero, but zero will not allow you to pay off your student loans. Two, additional circumstances exist is likely persistent for a significant portion of the repayment period of the student loans. This can be based on a number of factors, such as your current and future income, current and potential future expenses, medical expenses, repairs to your house, employment history, retirement, family structure, etc. Employment history. Has your past employment allowed you to make monthly payments? What has happened to you where you are now unable to make the payments? Medical condition or disability. Is your medical condition getting to the point where you cannot work? Has your disability prevented you from attaining employment? that will provide you with enough income that will allow you to pay off your student loans. Retirement. Does your retirement income show that it is not enough for you to pay off your student loans? Are you going to work after you retire because your retirement income is not enough for you to live on? Is your retirement income just enough for you to live on? Is your retirement income only enough for you to live on and pay future potential medical expenses? Family structure. Do you have kids and what are their ages? Are you taking care of a family member? Are you a single parent? Or how did you become a single parent? Were you or are you married? Do you have three kids by three different people? Three, you have made good faith efforts to repay the loans. Good faith efforts does not mean that you never made a payment on your loans. If you never made the money to make a payment, no one can expect you to make a payment. It only means that you did not willfully or negligently cause the situation. Baby mama drama. It means that you were never married and you have eight kids by ten different people. While you were married, you had eight kids by ten different people. You do not know who the father is. Prison or jail. If you are or are about to go to prison, then do an income repayment plan to make sure you do not go into default on your loans. Unless you can show that it has no effect on your ability to pay your student loans, most judges will consider prison or jail time to be you negligently causing a situation where you are unable to pay your student loans. Enrolling in an income repayment plan will help to demonstrate to the judge that you kept up with your obligations to pay your loans. Prong two is the most difficult to prove, but the following will help. All of the following is in the example brief we posted on the website. According to Rule 902, the articles I have from online newspapers and periodicals describes the kind of disability or the medical condition I have, and the effects it can have on a person. These articles show that my disability is something you are born with and never goes away, or shows that the medical condition I have gets worse over time. According to Rule 803-4, my neuropsychological assessment was made for medical diagnosis or treatment, and it describes my medical history and the inception regarding my disability. Plus, it also describes some of my employment history. My neuropsychological assessment states that my disability not only affects my ability to read, write, spell, math, but it also affects me with regards to speech, hearing, concentration, focus, attention, processing speed, problem-solving skills, 
causes double vision, which results in my inability to stay focused. The printout I received from Social Security of my lifetime earnings shows the years my income decreased, or that I have never been able to attain reasonable employment. Therefore, when you combine the articles, my neuropsychological assessment, my medical condition, lifetime earnings from Social Security, it gives the court a better understanding about my life, why I am requesting a discharge, and why the situation will not change in the future. Next, state what documents are in the attachment. You will probably have a lot of evidence. The best thing to do is create an exhibits for plaintiff's brief and attach all the evidence to it. We provide an example of the exhibits for plaintiff's brief on our website. Next is the relief section. You write, I am requesting that all my educational or student loans be discharged. Don't forget to create a certificate of service for the brief and the exhibits for plaintiff's brief. Then make sure your full name, address, phone number, and maybe email is at the bottom of the brief, the exhibits for plaintiff's brief, and the two certificates of service. Then file the brief, certificate of service, exhibits for plaintiff's brief, and mail a copy of the brief, certificate of service, exhibits for plaintiff's brief, to the judge. You can always provide the judge with a courtesy copy of all motions and all briefs with a certificate of service for each.